Good morning, everyone. So uh, my name is Didier Vesoli, and I will uh, speak also about underground storage, but I will focus more on the technical uh, solution. Uh, but as for strategy, maybe you, you may not know uh, Geostock. So just a few words about the, the company. We are an international group focusing on uh, underground uh, storage. We do uh, both design, management of construction, and also we operate some uh, storage in France and uh, in Singapore and in Mexico. Uh, we did projects in more than uh, 50 countries. And we address all the techniques, so uh, salt caverns, uh, mine caverns, and also uh, porous, uh, porous media that is suitable for, uh, for natural gas, but also for hydrogen. So I'm sure you are now convinced about the need of storage after Catherine's presentation, so I'll not come back on this aspect. And I will more focus on why storing underground. First of all, because it will allow to have large uh, capacity, but it is also a safer way to, to store products. Uh, for example, it's not sensitive to earthquake. Uh, it's more environmental, ah, environmental friendly uh, because it uses less land and also uh, the visual impact, uh, the visual uh, aspect is, is also better. And Last but not least, uh, it is uh, very cost effective either for CAPEX and also for OPEX. So if we go to this economic aspect, uh, especially for hydrogen, uh, above ground storage will be uh, very uh, expensive. It has to be stored in pressure vessel, which is uh, very costly. And when we go for underground uh, storage, the cost per uh, cubic meter Will, uh, dec will decrease when the volume increases. So the larger storage you will, uh, you will build, the cost will be, uh, will be less per, per cubic meter. So it's, 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 it is true for uh, hydrocarbons, but it will be uh, even more true for hydrogen. So I will present you four ways to store uh, hydrogen uh, using underground techniques. Uh, first one is salt caverns. The, se the second one is to use uh, porous media, porous rocks. And the last one is uh, line rock caverns that can be used either for gaseous hydrogen or also for uh, hydrogen ca liquid carrier. So salt caverns is a very common technique for natural gas. Huh? We, we see that uh, there are a lot of uh, storage like that for, for natural gas in Europe and in the world. To do uh, a salt caverns, you need a, a specific geological formation, a salt layer or a salt dome. You need also access to fresh water or to seawater and a, a, a brine disposal. I will explain after how we, we build the storage. A typical uh, cavern is between 100,000 cubic meters and 1 million uh, cubic meters for the largest. And for gaseous product, it is usually operated between 80 and 200 bars. This is site dependent, but this is an, an average. So salt caverns are made, are created uh, by uh, solution mining, uh, also called leaching process. So you have first to drill a well, like uh, oil and gas well, and then we inject some fresh water or sea water to the salt, uh, to the salt layer. And step by step, we recover a saturated brine, and it will create a volume until the desired uh, capacity. In operation, the storage are uh, like a lung. It's operated between a minimum pressure and a maximum pressure. And we will cycle. So currently for natural gas, the cycling is quite low because it's more for interseasonal storage. As uh, Catherine mentioned, there are already some uh, existing uh, salt caverns for hydrogen storage in uh, UK and in, uh, in, in US. And the oldest uh, is, uh, was built in, uh, in 1972, so it's, uh, it's a proven, uh, proven solution. But this uh, storage are used uh, mainly for the chemical uh, industry, so they are not cycling uh, very fast. So thanks to these uh, existing caverns, we know that there is no major showstopper to store hydrogen in, uh, in salt caverns. 
but there are still some points to check on a case-by-case -case basis. Mainly, the, how to test the tightness of the caverns, what we call a mechanical integrity test, the MIT. We need also to check the salt integrity when we do fast cycling, because for hydrogen, we expect that the cavern will cycle more than for natural gas. So this is a point that needs also to be checked or the salt will react with this fast uh, cycling. Uh, and also, we have to, to check the biochemical reaction in the caverns. The hydrogen will react, can react with the brine at the interface, and there can be some uh, bacterial uh, development. So we, we, it's, uh, it's things that need to be checked because it's really dependent on the quality of the, of the, of the brine. And of course, the material compatibility. Currently, we have uh, salt caverns for natural gas, but the molecule of hydrogen is a bit different. It's smaller. It doesn't react as natural gas with the steel. So we need to check the material compatibility, mainly for the steels and, uh, and elastomers for the well completion. Uh, it was mentioned by uh, Catherine. Uh, there is no uh, salt layer or salt dome everywhere. Uh, in Europe, some countries are more lucky than uh, others. In Germany, Netherlands, UK, there is a very good uh, potential to create uh, uh, salt caverns. Uh, some other countries like uh, Spain or Germany have salt formation, but less. In Spain, for example, there is salt formation, but currently no uh, salt caverns at all for uh, gas storage. In, uh, in um, Portugal, uh, there are some uh, few caverns for natural gas, but the, there are other formation also, salt formation. In Italy, there is no uh, salt at all. And in Nordic country, like uh, Sweden or Norway, same. There is no, no, no salt at all. So uh, in, this, in this country, it will be not possible to, to create uh, such, uh, such storage. So salt, uh, salt caverns have uh, big uh, advantages. You can create a big volume. Working gas capacity will be up to 10,000 tons which is quite large. Uh, you can expect high flow rate, which uh, we can deliver a large quantity of product in a, in, a, in a small time. It's a proven solution. It's cost competitive. And there is very few risk of uh, contamination of the, of the product uh, during the, 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 when you store it in salt caverns. And there is a big potential to convert existing, existing storage. On the cons, uh, as we said, it requires a specific geology, so you cannot do it uh, everywhere. Also, you need the, the water to, 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 do, uh, to create the cavern and the brine disposal. It can be an issue in, uh, in some country. It's not people focus on the, on the geology, but the access to, the wa to water and the brine disposal can be also uh, uh, an issue. And uh, uh, in this... Uh, type of storage, you have a, a ratio of cushion gas. So the cushion gas is uh, the quantity of gas you have at the minimum pressure and that you cannot use. In salt cavern, it is recoverable at the end of the, the when you want, to, if you want to close the storage, you can recover the, the cushion gas at the end. But there is a high cushion gas ratio around 40% 40, 40 of the storage capacity. So it's also an investment. Um, there are many, many uh, projects ongoing, around uh, more than uh, four pilots or demonstration projects in France, in Germany, also in Netherlands. Uh, Gazuni is, is, uh, is leading one. Uh, uh, Strangey also is a hipster project uh, in France. There is another called IGO in, uh, in France, led by uh, Terega and uh, HDF. So things are moving. A lot of projects announced also in Europe and in US. So what we see is the difference between Europe and US is that uh, we start earlier in Europe, but now projects are moving faster in, uh, in, uh, in US. They are going directly for commercial, uh, commercial projects. And uh, at Geostock, we also uh, did many studies for uh, storage conversion. So, so Salt Cavern is, uh, is uh, the best, uh, one of the best ways to store a large quantity of, uh, of hydrogen. But if you are not lucky enough to have a salt, uh, salt layer or salt domes in, uh, in your country or where you want to make your storage, there are alternatives. And one of these is to store in a porous media. So porous media uh, storage, we will use uh, porous rocks, as you can see on, uh, on, the, on the slide. So it's more like a, a sponge. Huh? It will not be 
big volume. It's a, a, a very small uh, volume in a, in, a, in a rocks. It sees exactly the same as uh, the rocks where you that host the oil and gas before uh, before extraction. So we have to drill a well until this formation, and this formation must have also an impermeable rock above called uh, cap rock to contain to contain the product. So this storage uh, can be uh, developed in oil and gas uh, depleted field or in a deep saline aquifer. And it's usually operated between 60 and, and 200 bars. Uh, there was previous uh, application of, of, for this uh, kind of storage for uh, what called uh, tone gas, which is a blend of hydrogen and, uh, and uh, natural gas. It has been done in the mid, uh, in the mid uh, 20th uh, centuries. Uh, in Netherlands, in France, and in Germany, but most of the storage uh, have been either decommissioned or uh, converted to uh, natural gas storage. And more recently, uh, some pilots have been done for uh, also this, uh, the storage of this mixture of hydrogen and uh, CH4. Uh, one is uh, the Sun Storage Project, uh, led by uh, RAG in Austria, and the, another one is the Aikiko Project in, uh, in Argentina. So to date, there is no commercial storage for pure hydrogen, but there are several uh, ongoing studies. One is uh, high storage studies that I know because it's led by uh, Geostock, but there is also one uh, by uh, uh, um, UK in, in UK called high store pro and the I, uh, sorry, the name is, uh, is I use pro, uh, but all these three, uh, <laughs> these three st studies uh, show us that there is no showstopper to store pure hydrogen in, uh, in uh, porous rocks, which is a good news because it will allow large, uh, very large storage. But same as for salt caverns, there are a few uh, points to be checked on case by case basis, and it's what we do, uh, for example, in the high storage project. We take samples from different uh, storage operators and uh, we check the compatibility uh, of the brine, of the cap rocks, of the reservoir rocks with the hydrogen. And depend on the sites, the results are slightly different. So that's things that need to check uh, on case by case. So we, we check the hydrogen uh, behaviors in the reservoir. We check the chemical and biochemical reaction also in the reservoir, the cap rock tightness. And same uh, as uh, for uh, soil cavern, the material compatibility. So storage in porous uh, media will allow very large capacity, uh, up to 45,000 tons, which is very, very huge. It is cost competitive. And on the weak point, it requires also a, a specific geology, which is not available everywhere. And the cushion gas can be higher also than in, uh, in, uh, in uh, salt caverns, and it's not recoverable at all. So, this is uh, an, an investment. There is no commercial application to date for pure hydrogen, and the flow rate uh, will depend on the number of wells. So there can be also some, uh, some limitation uh, on that side. So when it's not possible to do either salt caverns or uh, storage in, uh, in porous uh, reservoir, we still have some, uh, a third uh, solution, which is called line rock caverns. So Online caverns are very common for storage of uh, LPG and for also uh, liquid hydrocarbons. There are caverns ongoing uh, project, for example, in, in Emirates for uh, crude oils with a capacity of 6 million uh, cubic meters. So it's, we can have a very, very large storage. But uh, these storage are based on uh, hydronamic containment principles. So this is the water around the storage that makes the containment. And these type of storage are usually built at uh, 100 meters, uh, between 100 and 200 meters below ground. So the pressure inside the storage is limited to maximum 10 bars. So if you have a uh, storage of uh, 100,000 cubic meters capacity, if you want to store a gaseous product, either hydrogen or natural gas, there is no natural gas storage because of that. For hydrogen, you will have only 90 tons uh, of storage which is quite low for this uh, big uh, physical uh, volume. 
So it's not really attractive. It can be interesting for cavern conversion, but not for, for new storage. So how to increase the pressure inside the storage, we have to add a liner to be able to go up to 200 bars. So there is no uh, storage of this kind for uh, hydrogen, but there is one for natural gas in Sweden at the Scalen site. So we know the technology works and we don't see any issue to, to transfer this technology to the storage of, uh, of hydrogen. So it is, we, you will have some galleries uh, built at 100 or 200 meters below ground. And on the wall of the galleries, we will install uh, 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 metallic liners to hold uh, 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 up to 200 bars. So with these liners, we can have uh, working gas capacity between 10 tons for the very small caverns up to uh, 1,000 tons on, or even more. So the challenge for this kind of storage will be the tightness system because we need to adapt what has been done for the natural gas to uh, hydrogen and the constructability because also it would be a big, uh, it can be some, uh, some issue. So the main advantage of this kind of storage is that it can be done almost everywhere. You don't need a specific, you, you need a specific geology, but not <laughs> as uh, for uh, salt caverns or for porous reservoirs. So it can be done almost, almost everywhere. It allows high flow rates. It's very flexible because you can do import and export at the same time, which usually it's not the case for the other kind of storage. And you have no risk of uh, product contamination. It will be like an above ground tank, so very safe for the product. And also the cushion gas will be very low because you can go down to uh, 20 bars. So the remaining volume of gas inside the cavern is very low. And also it can be recoverable at the end of the, uh, of the life cycle uh, of the storage. Of course, there are some disadvantages. The cost, it will be much more expensive than uh, salt caverns or uh, uh, storage in porous media. And there are still some technical developments uh, needed. This kind of storage can be also suitable to store uh, liquid carrier for ammonia, like, uh, um, uh, sorry, liquid carrier for hydrogen, like ammonia, LOHC, different LOHC, and uh, also liquefied uh, hydrogen. For ammonia, can be stored either under pressure, because at uh, uh, 30 degrees, it will be around 10 bars, so we can use uh, line rock caverns to, to, to store ammonia like that, or also uh, at minus 40 degrees. So it will be suitable. For LOHC, it has to be checked with the, the provider of the technology, but we don't see any, uh, any major issue. And for liquid hydrogen, uh, there is a significant R&D uh, effort required because with the very low temperature, um, there are some challenges. We made a, a pilot uh, in Korea a few years ago for LNG storage. So the temperature is around minus 160 degrees. So we think we can, based on this experience, to develop uh, hydrogen storage for liquid hydrogen. But uh, there are some, uh, some challenges, especially on the, also on the, on the membrane. So uh, this is more an uh, engineer uh, table, not uh, easy to, uh, to, to, to read, but if we take the main uh, advantages of uh, each uh, solution, Salt Cavern is a, mature, is a mature solution. It is cost uh, effective. You can uh, have a large uh, volume of, uh, of uh, product. You can store a large volume of product, and uh, you can expect also a uh, high, uh, high flow rate. The main weakness is that there is no salt everywhere. If you want to store very large quantity, you can go for porous rocks, depleted field or aquifer when uh, it's available. The cost will be very low. One issue is a cushion gas. You need a very large cushion gas, uh, and so it's, uh, it's, it's expensive. And for the area where there is not, it's not possible to do salt caverns or storage in porous rock, line work caverns will be an alternative, especially in sports area. It's, we, we see it more for logistic purpose. And uh, maybe it will be also the future for, uh, for current tank, uh, 
tank farm operators because they can diversify their operation to hydrogen thanks to this, uh, this technology. So we often have question on, on cost, so it's difficult to give figures because uh, capex for this kind of project depends on a lot of parameters, but to, just to give you a, 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 an average of uh, uh, what you can get for, for example, a capex of 55 million with the different techniques. If you go for above ground uh, storage, you will have a storage of 36 tons. If you go for line uh, rock caverns, it's time fives, so 200 tons. And you see that if you can do salt caverns or porous rocks, the volume becomes much more higher. So yeah, just to give some, uh, some idea of the, the volume you can store with a fixed uh, budget. So in conclusion, uh, we see salt cavern as the best solution to store large quantity of hydrogen when it's possible to do it. Uh, porous rocks also will, uh, will take their place uh, in the future when large, uh, large storage will be required. And we believe that line rock caverns will also uh, take a role uh, more for logistic purpose and uh, when the, the technology will be ready. And for um, ammonia, uh, LOHC, we think also it will come uh, soon. And for liquid hydrogen, we see it more in, uh, for two, 2040 or, or even later. So that's all for me. Thank you.